Hello, my name is Jean Mundy. I'm from Florida State University, and we're in the lovely city of Tampa today at the National Recreation Congress. Uh, we have with us Dr. Francis Cannon, who is a Professor Emeritus from Florida State University, and I'm delighted that I'm getting to ask Francis the questions uh, after having been associated with her for many, many years as a friend, a colleague, and a respected mentor. Francis comes to us and a lot of the other interviews as a part of the American Academy of Recreation and Park Administrators Legends in Park and Recreation series. Francis, the first question I just have to ask is, how does it feel to be a legend? I'm impressed. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's like uh, writing your own obituary or? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's very humbling, very, very humbling. It's, I can imagine uh, it would be. Yeah. Did you ever think when you started out on playgrounds and sop choppy and all of that that you would end no, up here? No, 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 no. I, I've, I've been lucky in that I've joined every, enjoyed everything I ever did, and uh, I never, you know, planned that this step's going to lead to the next or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a surprise to be here today, but I appreciate it. And I think when we tell you something about Frances's areas of uh, accomplishment, you'll see that she's been very, very active in the profession over the years. She has uh, experiences. She has made numerous contributions. She was head of the program at Florida State University for over 20 years. Uh, I know she's looks too young to have been there that yeah. long, but uh, anyway, she had been there and taught and happened to have been one of my professors. Uh, her main areas of expertise have been in the area of supervision, staff development, and research. She has served the profession in so many different ways, and part of that will come out as, as we're talking uh, for the next few minutes. But she was uh, president of the Society of Recreation and Park Educators, and she's also been president of the Florida Recreation and Park Association. And of the awards she has gotten, they've been numerous and very prestigious. She received the Society of Recreation and Park Educators Distinguished Fellow Award, the National Recreation and Park Association Southern Regional Harold D. Meyer Award, and she received from our state association, the Florida Recreation and Park Association, the Achievement Award and the Fellow Award. And so her career has been quite illustrious, and what I think we need to do now is is ask, you know, tell us some of, of your background. How did you get started? How did you get interested in the profession? Well, uh, I was born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, back in those dark ages, uh, the Methodist Church was very active in in recreation youth uh, movement, and I got in I got into recreation interest uh, because my church developed it within us and. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the opportunity, even when I was in junior high school, to go to some workshops on, on recreation. Um, then uh, my senior year, I'd already, in high school, I'd already finished up uh, uh, all my requirements except one or two, so I went into, I think we called it the DCT, uh, Diversified Cooperative Training or something, where I went to school half time and worked the other, and it was, uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale was a little teeny town at that time, and uh, the YMCA came in and was interested in seeing if there was going to be interest in support and so forth from the community, and they started a youth center. And I got to be uh, spend half of my days rather than school. I stayed as a, the assistant uh, director of the youth center. Well, that really sold me that I knew I wanted to work with young people, but uh, back then, you know, there was no such thing as a major in recreation. Uh, there was, uh, so I came to, went to Florida State and got my undergraduate degree in physical education and a couple of courses, one course in recreation if I remember correctly and then I got my master's in health education and uh, uh, started working with 4-H all over the state for 10 years and doing their recreation specialist direct, in the summer directing five camps and you know just, I just kind of 
kept going to that track and <clears throat> after doing excuse me after doing that for 10 years uh, Bill Tate who had just started the curriculum recreation curriculum at Florida State asked me to come and be uh, on what we call then the resident teaching because extension was a type of teaching so I got into it that way and started and then went and got my doctorate at Columbia with uh, Dick Krauss that's when he was there and uh, have taught there at Florida State all along. So you're one of the true uh, HPER yeah. kind <laughs> of graduates. I probably one of, I think one time they said I was one of two people who were really true HPNR. Interesting. <laughs> was because of my academic preparation yeah. and background, but recreation's my love, always was. Yeah. So. Well, how did you, uh, once you got interested in the profession and began to move into uh, that whole area, were there individuals other than Bill Tate mm -hmm. that you felt helped you along, that were mentors to you? Because you've been such a wonderful mentor to so many well, young people. Thank you. Well, I, I uh, Janet McLean was uh, taking a lot of leadership role uh, back mm -hmm. then, and uh, Betty Vandersmissen, Tony Mobley, and uh, I, I was lucky enough to get uh, involved in things where, in which they were, and, and uh, kind of studied them a little bit. And so I think I would consider them my mentors, even though that was not a term back then. It was just mm -hmm. people helping people. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, the. Uh interesting thing I think is looking at when you started I mean it was just in the early early pioneer stages oh it was what are some of the changes you've seen <clears throat> over time in our profession well uh, for one thing is of course being from the educational aspect um, well, what, like when I started teaching there at Florida State, there were uh, three of us, J uh, Jack Haskins and Bill and I, and there weren't enough courses. Not, we hadn't identified enough of a body of knowledge back then to teach uh, certain courses, and the three of us were actually teaching half-time PE and half-time recreation. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a big change in us identifying our body of knowledge and imparting it. Uh, Whereas our problem today is not that we don't have enough knowledge to teach our students in order to have a full-time major. The problem now is how to decide which is the most important to do. So that the content, I think, of our field is, has expanded so. Um, the, the, uh, the agencies and, uh, that, that utilize uh, leisure services, parks and recreation, and their uh, services to people has, has expanded so yeah. so tremendously. You know, largely in uh, municipal and county, uh, and then in the state. Some states got into it, but now, gosh, there. Well, even therapeutic recreation. You know, it it, it was there a little bit, but it was largely in psychiatrical. Look what uh, TR is right now in so many different aspects and uh, youth agencies, commercial resorts. So the the uh, uh, places in which uh, utilize our field has expanded. So I think those probably the the biggest that and the uh, not only uh, more qualified, more being more in the number as well as better qualified uh, personnel. I think is tremendous. Yeah, I was wondering about that uh, personnel issue, particularly with you being involved with accreditation, certification so much, which leads me to say, you know, what do you feel are some of the most uh, significant accomplishments that you have had in our field? And I know you're very <laughs> modest and don't want to talk about it, so. well. Give it a try. I, I hope my greatest contribution was was my alums, uh, the students that I've uh, had the opportunity to work with. And um, well, yesterday we had uh, Florida State University had a reception here at NRPA for our for our alums, and we had quite a crowd there. And to see uh, students that were there and <clears throat> and how they've. Uh, the positions that they have in in their hometowns, as well as the professional profe uh, mm -hmm. positions that they have, and um, I, I think that's probably my greatest contribution is through my alums, 
Um, well, you know, one of the things that has been said about you, uh, probably behind your back, is you are a great grower of people. You mm -hmm. contribute to their growth, their development. That has mm -hmm. always been something you've known for uh, at FSU as well as in the profession. Mm -hmm. And so I can see where yeah. you should take real well, pride in that. I guess I should also say, though, that you know the old saying of us in college teaching, whether whether our students succeed because or in spite of us, you never you never know which. And I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> What other? You were president of Spree. You were president of our state association. What well, are some of the other accomplishments in those roles or in committee roles or just to the profession? Well, when I was uh, president of, of uh, Society of Park Ration Educators, um, we did some uh, things we stepping stones of, of more and more active uh, we are in the total profession and at that time we uh, we were working on accreditation and continued to work and continued to have a role there but it was during my presidency that that Spree uh, got concerned with community colleges and um, one of the things was I was able to uh, inst institute the first uh, meeting of co community colleges nationally where we brought together the heads of departments and from that then we led into uh, looking at the uh, curriculum and how to identify and improve the curriculum in community colleges. Um, the, uh, we did a, started doing a lot even more work then on registration certification of, of personnel mm -hmm. and um, while I was with Spree and as far as uh, uh, when I was president of Florida Parks and Recreation, uh, we were able to inst instigate a um, working with our administrators of, of departments. We found that the state conferences and workshops were always aimed at uh, people uh, other than the top administrative person, and we realized that they needed also the opportunity to get together and to study and things that were without their other staff members around so that they'd be willing to let their hair down. Or um, So we got started that, so I, I feel that was It was somewhat, very successful. Yeah, very successful, and it's, uh, today it, it's a very active group here in Florida, the Florida right. Parks and Recreation administrators of all the different agencies. Uh, also, uh, during my presidency, we were able to hire our first full-time executive director. Uh, and, with FRPA. With FRPA. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, uh, talking about the alums, um, I was thinking about the alums uh, last night when, at their reception, and I was wondering where two of our people were, then I suddenly realized, well, the two of them are executive directors of other state associations. So I thought, well, so we've had three yeah. different state associations uh, being run by or excuse me, managed <laughs> by uh, FSU alums, which I'm yeah. proud of. Yeah, if we just went through the list of yeah. the alum accomplishments yeah. and positions, it yeah. would be awesome. And then I, I uh, after I'd served in those positions as president of those organizations, I stayed active and I particularly was interested in uh, certification. Uh, the FR, Florida Recreation Park Association had um, always been interested and Bill Tate had a lot to do with that and we had that time we called it registration where we were trying to register people who had met certain qualifications mm. and from that we led into the national picture of, of certification and uh, I, I, I've i really enjoyed my work there. Um, I the, remember <laughs> you and Don Jolly <coughs> Don <coughs> chaired <at> one <laughs> of the NRPA meetings that we thought you were either going to get shot, shot or uh, <laughs> praised and we weren't sure which. Well, that was so I still don't know. <laughs> but we, uh, Don chaired for a couple of years and I was co-chair and, and worked closely with him on uh, certification and developing standards and uh, if I, we at the meeting before we gave the report that you're referring to, we we talked about uh, well, let's bite the bullet, and 
afterwards people said you didn't you did more than bite the bullet you shot the cannon and I said well I don't know if you're talking about me or, or, <laughs> or a cannon but uh, where we said there shall be you shall grad in order to be certified and recognized you will be graduate from a a uh, mm -hmm. university and an accredited university yeah. and uh, and we also said that there will be a written test uh, that that's when we weren't sure but anyway I uh, I actually had the opportunity to, do, to write the first draft of the plan, national plan, and it's been improved on all along the way, but that was, that was great. Yeah. That was great. Well, I'll never forget that controversy. <laughs> <laughs> it still goes on <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. Uh, we had to get you out of town fast. Yeah. And then my accreditation, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, working with accreditation. Now, Florida State, uh, Bill Tate was a man before his time in lots of different yeah. ways. You know, we were one of the first schools. His, he started field work and internship, and I remember sitting at a spree meeting once, a workshop, oh, after I'd been there about 10 years, and this guy got up and said, you know, we, we're doing something innovative. We're going to start having a full-time internship. And I turned around and looked at him to see if he was serious because Bill Tate had had a full-time internship for students down there yeah. for... 10 years before. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, I've, I really enjoyed uh, uh, having the opportunity of, of working uh, with the standards and uh, I you know, worked with uh, a lot of the committees on, on accreditation yeah. and, and their revision and I, I had the opportunity of chairing, I think the last count was something like 10 visitation teams for two yes. different universities and and you just went through another training didn't you to <coughs> yeah get back into that I just I just got retread again because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cheryl Beeler who's on the accreditation council said come on some of you oldies need to get back in here so several of us did good well as I remember Florida State was one of three universities mm -hmm. that was used in the beginning to test the standards yeah. on yeah yeah well, it was and and then uh, after we we volunteered and they tested the whole procedure on us and uh, you know we went through the whole thing. It was such a helpful experience. I guess is why I got turned on so much in the very beginning. And this is way back in the '60s, uh, to, to where uh, a couple of years after they had really refined and were starting to accredit schools, they gave the three of us. An opportunity to uh, do an update on our self-study and and to therefore become accredited without having to have a visitation team and so forth. And we got so much out of the whole process, we said no, we're going to go through the whole process again. So rather than being the second or third school accredited, we're what fourth or fifth, but that's all right. We. Uh, well, I remember proud of that honor. <laughs> those of us on the faculty were not too happy with that. No. <laughs> as you may remember. I remember. <laughs> but as usual, you were right. So well, at least that time. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, in terms of accreditation, certification, all of this is dealing with standards and, and uh, excellence and competence. What do you think are some of the skills and attributes that are needed today with to make an excellent administrator? Actually, uh, I'm not sure whether people realize the history of, uh, of the uh, certification and accreditation, but we went back and actually studied what does an administrator do as a means of of uh, deciding what questions to use on the mm -hmm. test and so forth, and also to look at the curriculums to see if it's in there. But uh, I still say, though, of all the studies we did about characteristics of good administrators, I still think the most important is you got to like people. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the ability to uh, uh, organize, and the first thing that has to be organized is yourself. And uh, I think they have to be able to evaluate. And I think one of the first things they got to evaluate is themselves and to develop a self-understanding and um, learn how to control themselves, uh, how to use themselves for the development of their staff.
I remember you used a phrase that I've never forgotten when uh, I was in your class, the conscious use of self, yeah. where you use who you are and what you are and your skills and abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, very um, decisively. Would you believe I haven't thought of that term in years? Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've never forgotten it. <laughs> so yeah. see, some of us did a little. Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> every now and then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, what else? Other skills and abilities of? Oh, well, uh, communication is so important. Be able to communicate with. Uh, your staff and to, to communicate with the community and, and the administrative board, whoever it is, what kind of agency you're in, to, uh, to be able to, in, uh, to interpret uh, the goals and objectives of the agency and so forth. Do you think politics <laughs> is more in operation today or less or is political savvy, something that administrators need? Well, very much so. Uh, I, I don't care what kind of agency you're in, uh, uh, you have politics. And uh, you need, to me, politics is nothing more than understanding people and knowing what's interesting to them and then play to that point. So, uh, you know, if you know people and know how to work with people, you, you're a good politician because you do those things. But uh, yeah, politics, I don't care what agency you're in. Some people have to say, you know, I don't want to go into uh, city, county, uh, governmental because there's so much politics. Believe me, there's as much politics in YMCA and church recreation and hospital boards as, <laughs> as there is in the city. Uh, I know that because I directed internships so much that I've heard the students talk about it. So, oh, absolutely. It's 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 so important and also I, I if if, uh, if uh, someone watching this tape is still a student I'd say boy the thing you need also is to get as much uh, organizational behavior coursework uh, financial management uh, yeah. you know the uh, uh, how to set and reach goals I mean those uh, they just got to be a perfect individual, the administrator does. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have so many of them around right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I was interested in, um, from your perspective, mm. is what do you think are significant problems that we may have in the field today, since uh, you can look at it from an inside as well as an outside perspective as a uh, retired professor? Oh, some of our problems, huh? Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure we have that many anymore. We used to, <laughs> no, we got plenty of them, but uh, here again, it, it's uh, the agency really knowing what their role is, what they're about, and, and interpreting it to people. There, you'll still find some agencies that are, are talking about uh, telling about how many uh, acres they have or how many ball fields they have rather than talking about uh, what they're really seeking to achieve, to achieve and uh, that uh, the, of course, my prejudice is our whole profession is about developing people, but you have to realize I'm prejudiced on that one. <laughs> but that, that I don't care what, our, what we're doing, it should be uh, looking at the individual and seeing what, what we're doing. Who is it? Joseph Lee, was it, that used to use the phrase, uh, what was it, something to the fact that we're not interested in what Johnny does with the ball, but we're interested in what the ball does to Johnny. Yeah. I guess that philosophically is one of my yeah. things that stuck with me the most. But uh, you're seeing more of it where, uh, uh, you know, if you go in and ask some administrators, for instance, what is your philosophy of recreation? And they'll say, well, uh, 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 you know, and, and I think I think one of the problems in our profession is people need to reevaluate constantly their their philosophy and what are we about. Mm. And yeah, that's it's interesting that you should comment on that because so frequently, um, you know, at least in academia, we're talking about are we recreation, are we leisure, are we parks, you mm -hmm. know, some sort of what identity, yeah. you know. But I think part of the nice thing is there's room for all of that. Oh, absolutely. One of the things with the um, problems I'd like 
for you to address. Do you think that we have maintained the standards that people like you and Tony and Betty Vandersmith and Jan McLean, Ted Deppy, that whole uh, Doug Sessoms, that whole group <coughs> set out to establish? Are you pleased with where we are with that, or do you think we need to relook at it? No, I, I, oh, I think, I think, uh, I think all of us back then are, are pleased that we've been used to uh, the, the steps to going on up. I mean, that in some ways, I think we've increased our standards, which I hope we'll always do. Other ways, a couple of things that bug me, as you might expect, is, uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, the, the, one of the importance in uh, certification is to make sure that our professionals are always up to date and um, that they that they're creative, innovative, uh, that they will, that they will be leading the pack rather than following. Um, and I, I think, I think lots of our professionals do that. I think we have some great innovative things yeah. going on in our field. But there are some of us that aren't as innovative as we should be. Um, I, I get a little disturbed <laughs> when I look at the continuing education requirements in order to stay certified. Uh, it bugs me that, that uh, we're not sticking with the original emphasis in continuing education is that you learn in depth on something. That is, it used to be that you'd have to take uh, or at least uh, three to or, or more hours of a topic in order to make sure that you're staying up to date with it. And today uh, you're finding, well, <laughs> not just in state but in national where for after an hour and 15 minutes, they consider you know the in-depth of that, and therefore they'll give you a point one credit CEUs. Well, some people say that's not a problem. They'll say it's actually great because what it's, and it's true, what has really happened is requiring CEUs has really improved the quality of meetings, uh, the, the topics that's as true. well as the speakers and so yes. forth. It, it's had a big impact on on state associations and, and on national too. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. So <clears throat> while it's a problem, it's a blessing too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been around students for a good long time now. And in fact, we had to recycle you, <laughs> bring you back to the university to help out in crises three times. Um, what do you think about the quality of curriculum, the quality of students we're getting today? Do you think it's uh, where you would like to see it? Well, I think the quality of, of the curriculum is constantly improving. Uh, I, uh, you know, it, it's, if you go back and look at what the content was when I first started teaching back in the early 60s and what the content is of the same course today, it's, uh, no, we've done a great job in, and I think I, I attribute a lot of that to the accreditation process. Yeah, because back back then in the in the '60s, in here in Florida, for instance, we had one school that offered one course in recreation, and you interned in it, and you had a degree in recreation. You know, whereas today uh, <laughs> it's a little that, different. That wouldn't fly. So I. I uh, I, while we're talking about the things that I take pride in, one of the things I take pride in is 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 Florida State being one of the first uh, or, or the first school that that limited enrollment. And uh, rather than seeing how many students we could produce, we decided we were going to look at the quality. That and the fact that we'd have a lot of students take the, take our, declare a major and they decide this wasn't it and they'd drop out or they would think it was CRIP courses and they'd come in and flunk out. Uh, in that we at Florida State uh, started selective admission, admit only at their junior year after they've completed their basic education, and that they had to uh, have a 2.5 uh, overall coming out of general education, and that they had to maintain their averages and so forth. And we found as a result the quality of our students really improved. It wasn't the uh, athlete looking for a CRIP major. Uh, Although we've had some great athletes who've been a major, I, I don't know how many uh, 
Charlie Ward, who was quite an outstanding mm -hmm. football player, was is a and a Heisman Trophy and winner, a Heisman by the way, <laughs> is one of our majors and and uh, is certified in in therapeutic recreation mm -hmm. and uh, praises his his work that he's had. So I'm not I don't mean to imply that every athlete is yeah. is a goof off, but you have to admit some of them were. I don't know if you were there when <clears throat> when Roger Childers was there. Oh yeah, <laughs> and how he used to get kind of excited about these. But anyway. Didn't mean to bring that one up, but uh, the quality of students everywhere, I think, is going up. I think some schools need to put a lid on how many they admit, hmm. because what's interesting, if you look at, at the, and there are several other schools now that limit enrollment, if you look at the number of graduates, the people, number that FSU is graduating versus those who have 200 majors, you'll see that it's very similar. Yeah. In other words, uh, there's so much change in, in students coming in and out that it dilute, dilutes your content of your courses. And, but, you know, the quality of students is much improved. So, well, I shouldn't say that because you were a student. Well, <laughs> maybe that's why you said it. <laughs> well, one of the other things that uh, I think people would be interested in is what do you think are some of the biggest needs in the profession today? Are there some things that... When isn't money an issue? <laughs> well, true. <laughs> uh, our needs... Uh, I, think, I think we need to... Uh, you know, when I talk about the problems, I think I was addressing some of those needs. Uh, mm -hmm. Their yeah. quality. Just uh, maintaining the quality. <clears throat> maintaining the quality. Uh, the uh, innovative uh, continue to... Look at dog, you know, coming up with doggy parks, which uh, one of the first ones was here in Florida. Um, the skateboarding issue, uh, the issue of uh, use of land, of um, you know, or do you really want a quiet place, uh, uh, and therefore don't want any organized activities in these parks, or do you want people to just wander through the parks? Or, uh, what advice would you give a student entering the field today? <clears throat> <laughs> like people, first of all. <laughs> uh, Even though they're going to probably end up being managers. No, oh, they, they need it more than anybody, I guess. Of course, uh, uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> no, I, I attended a session yesterday that Cheryl did. I thought a tremendous job on talking about uh, supervising uh, the superstars in the manager's role there and so forth. And I, and I think we do have... Um, uh, some real challenges as managers, as administrators, as mm -hmm. educators, in helping uh, the staff become the best they can be, to mm -hmm. use that phrase. Uh, I hate to tell you, but I forgot what you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <Yeah. laughs> no, I was uh, asking what advice oh. you would give someone, like people. Going into the field? Yeah. That they like people, that they have a good understanding of themselves. Um, uh, the other that, thing I remember you telling us is you better be willing to work when everybody else uh, is at play. That's right. That uh, your hours are uh, not the best, uh, might not always suit your lifestyle, so you need to make sure that <laughs> the agency you go into that you're happy with that. Um, I, I think also the, that they uh, need to continue to learn that, you know, the mm -hmm. old saying I used to use, when you think you're green, you'll grow, and when you think you're ripe, you're rotten. So yeah. we never stop learning. Uh, need to constantly read. Um, advice I'd give to them is to uh, get active in their profession, to realize that it's, they need to be part of their um, setting policies and procedures and mm -hmm. um, need to be active in their professional association and um, some of the comments I've already made about the importance of making sure they're grounded in certain disciplines. Uh, yeah. Also, I'd, I, I would advise them to uh, seek to be the best they can in their profession, but don't ever forget their own leisure. Very good. And don't ever forget their family life. That uh, 
it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying last night how pleased you were yeah. uh, that so many of our alums brought their kids yeah. to our social yeah. hour so yeah. that we could meet them and they yeah. could meet us and how rewarding that was, that was for it was. It was. It's very meaningful when, when they recognize the importance of their family and bring them with them to conferences and yeah. I think it's it was fun meeting them all. Yeah, it, it, really, it really was. It really was. One of the uh, things I wanted to ask you is, do you think students today entering the profession have as bright a future as we had? Are there as many opportunities for growth and innovation and expansion? Mm. Well, I think there's more than when back in the dark ages when you and I were young. Um, no, I, I, there's so many opportunities. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, the profession, well, if you look here at, at, at the National Congress here, how they have zeroed in in making sure that students uh, got a chance to interact with the professionals, okay. um, how they've had uh, uh, a student organization that is active. Uh, also, I think you'll find today that uh, more and more curriculums are involving students directly in the uh, uh, ongoing management of of the departments of the, at the colleges and universities that they uh, well like we have uh, have had for what 20 years had a student as a member of our, stu our faculty meetings and they bring input from students and things like this so mm -hmm. I think students are much more involved than they used to be okay. much more would you, how would you characterize the uh, future of the recreation park and leisure field? Great. It's wonderful. We're going to be valued, as they say, uh, uh, people are recognizing leisure and that it's important and uh, uh, we're getting more and more support uh, uh, bond-wise uh, than we've had in the past when people understand what you're trying to do and what you're going to do with the money and so forth. They're supporting us. And uh, I think we've got a bright future, very bright. That uh, it's it's going to be the challenge of being innovative and staying ahead. But uh, uh, it'd be a wonderful time to get back into fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may come back anytime you want. We'd be delighted. No, to I, have you. <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying practicing this thing called leisure and. Uh, <laughs> Well, I wanted to ask you, what are you doing? You've been retired now about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've stayed active in the profession. I, I uh, kept up some committee work with the uh, um, Florida Recreation Park Association. I haven't been as active on the national level, but I've tried to stay in the state. Uh, I've, um, you know, come back every now and then over to FSU, but, but uh, only when I'm asked. I try not to be too nosy about there. <laughs> but what do I do in my leisure? Oh, I just enjoy it. I, uh, at 75, I decided I need to, pl to learn to play golf, so that's become addictive. Uh, I travel a good bit. Uh, uh, the question is, do I want to go fishing or do I want to go scalloping or lobstering or being here in Florida, I do a lot of that. Yeah. And, Wonderful. So you're, I, I don't know if you remember that we were saying uh, taking bets on how well you would adjust to retirement mm -hmm. because you were so hard working. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to admit, you have not had any, <laughs> any trouble with it at all. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the uh, questions that I want to ask, and you have pretty well, I think, answered it mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole conversation, is what philosophical beliefs have guided you in your career? Well, I think it's, uh, I think I've hit on it yeah. maybe too much, and that is the belief in, uh, um, the belief in, in the individual, and that uh, uh, each individual has to be given the opportunity. We can create situations through which they can grow and develop, that every member of the staff is important, uh, that maybe the most important persons are your secretary and your custodian, who knows, because they're the ones who come in contact. And yes. that's been my philosophy, that, that it's the people who come in contact with the public. They're the ones we need to make sure they understand what we're all about and so forth. Um, yeah, I think that's 
very well sums up you and your philosophy and how you have lived your personal and professional life. Thank That's you. very admirable. And on behalf of the Academy, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to do this mm -hmm. today. Well, I'm I, sure it'll be most helpful to anybody listening well, to it. I, I appreciate the Academy giving me this opportunity. It's uh, been a trip going down a memory lane. And uh, I, um, my philosophy, you're asking my philosophy, has also been uh, the, there's a, a group of nuns who uh, whose philosophy is I, I serve, how's it go, I serve neither for reward or recognition. My reward is that I might serve. And I think that's probably my philosophy. It's been a reward being able to serve the profession. But if the nuns were here, I'd also say to them, this recognition ain't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you Thank certainly you deserve the recognition. Please, please express my appreciation to the Academy. I shall. Thank you.